Praise the Lord, St. Mark family and friends, and welcome to our digital service. Today, we will be joined by our very own Reverend Kay Coates from Ebenezer AME in Brunswick, Maryland. So I just ask that you sit back and receive what thus says the Lord. We pray that you will hear something today that will touch your spirit, that will make you want to ask the question, if you haven't already done so, what you must do to be saved. Amen. Praise the Lord, St. Mark. Let us pray. Father, we just come to you right now saying thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you allowed us to see another day. Thank you, Lord, that you provide us with all the things that we need, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for keeping us, dear Heavenly Father, as we went through the work week, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you that you continue to provide for us, continue, dear Heavenly Father, to let us have the things that we need to Heavenly Father and even granting us some of the things that we desire of our hearts. Lord, we just ask right now in the name of Jesus that you would be with those dear Heavenly Father who are sick and shut in. Lord, I ask that you would especially stop by our home today dear Heavenly Father and bless our family that are sick dear Heavenly Father. We ask, Lord, that you would go to each and every individual home, dear Heavenly Father, listening today, that you would bless them and anoint them, dear Heavenly Father, as only you can. Lord, we ask that you would heal souls, heal bodies, dear Heavenly Father, heal relationships, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, heal those who are have mental illness, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, be with those who are suffering from depression, dear Heavenly Father, loneliness, dear Heavenly Father. Be with those who are grieving today, dear Heavenly Father. Lord, for we know that you are our all in our all, dear Heavenly Father. We know you are our rock. We know that we can run into you, dear Heavenly Father, with all our cares. So right now, dear Heavenly Father, we're casting our cares on your feet. We're asking, Lord, that you would be with us, dear Heavenly Father, continuously. Lord, we're asking that you would keep us as only you can. Lord, we ask that as your word goes forth today, dear Heavenly Father, that it will fall on ears of people that are able to hear you, dear Heavenly Father, and those that can't hear you, dear Heavenly Father, that today, their hearts will be pricked, dear Heavenly Father, to ask the question what they must do to be saved. We love you. We trust you. And we give your name, dear Heavenly Father, all the honor, the glory, and the praise. For it's in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ's name, that we pray this prayer and we say, Amen. Today, our scripture will be 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 5, the Amplified Version. I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word as an official messenger, be ready when the time is right, even when it is not. Keep your sense of urgency, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome. Correct those who err in doctrine or behavior. Warn those who sin. Exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity with inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate the sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth, but wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing. They will accumulate for themselves many teachers one after another chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they held they hold and will turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off myths and man-made fictions and will accept the unacceptable but as for you be clear-headed in every situation stay calm cool and steady Endure every hardship without flinching. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill the duties of your ministry. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. Amen.
Good morning to the St. Mark family and to Pastor and First Lady Davis. I bring you greetings from Ebenezer Brunswick, where Reverend Lewis Kelly is our pastor, and he, like our present company, is an excellent servant leader. This is the day that the Lord has made, and it's a wonderful day for us to rejoice and be glad. I'm certainly glad to be in the company of the saints and especially in the presence of God. You have heard the scripture reading, but I want to read it again from the Amplified Version. This scripture is generally used to remind the pastors and ministers of their calling and duties. But today, I'm using it as a reminder to us, the ones they serve well. Starting at verse 1, I solemnly charge you in the presence of God and of Jesus Christ, who is to judge the living and the dead. Preach the word as an official messenger. Be ready when the time is right and even when it is not. Keep your sense of urgency, whether the opportunity seems favorable or unfavorable, whether convenient or inconvenient, whether welcome or unwelcome. Correct those who err in doctrine or behavior. Warn those who sin. Exhort and encourage those who are growing towards spiritual maturity. With inexhaustible patience and faithful teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine and accurate instruction that challenges them with God's truth but wanting to have their ears tickled with something pleasing, they will accumulate for themselves many teachers, one after another, chosen to satisfy their own desires and to support the errors they hold, and will turn their ears away from the truth and will wander off into myths and man-made fictions and will accept the unacceptable, but as for you, be clear-headed in every situation. Stay cool and calm and steady. Endure every hardship without flinching and do the work and fulfill the duties of your ministry. God, my Father, I come before you in the name of Jesus. I give you glory and honor and praise and I just wanna thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the opportunity to stand to proclaim a word on your behalf. Father, I'm asking that now you would send forth this word and that you would hasten over your word to perform it in the lives of your people. God, I will forever be grateful and I will come back and give you glory and honor and praise. Father, have your will and your way to be done. I ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. Today, I will use as a topic recognizing the gift that is in your midst. Before I was ordained, I served in many capacities in the AME church, some of them official and some of them just because something needed to be done. However, one of my favorite positions or boards to serve on was that of the steward board. I was eventually appointed the steward pro tem. I value that period in my life because the Lord gave me an appreciation for a pastor, the shepherd who looks after and tends to his sheep. I share this little bit of information whenever I get the chance because when I came to know the charge and the responsibilities of a shepherd, one who is really called of God as a steward, it was purposed in my heart to make sure that anything and everything that the pastor needed in order to effectively minister to the people, I determined that if it were in my power to do something or to persuade others to do something to make their job easier, I knew that I was going to do it. However, even though I had a heart for pastors, it was reading scriptures like 2 Timothy 4 that I came to really, truly appreciate the called men and women of God who stand on the wall to proclaim what thus saith the Lord. Those who have been called to watch care, even though some folk didn't want to be watched, called 
to shepherd all the people, including the ones who didn't want to be led or fed and called to preach the word of God without compromise, especially in conflicting times like these. Right now, our pastors are called to tear down the strongholds of the mind in a time of confusion, to advance the kingdom here in the earth in an era of regression, to preach good news and to proclaim liberty in a time of oppression. They have been called in a time to stand on the wall with truth, as unpopular as it may be, a time when no one questions alternative truth, a a time when absolute truth is countered on every side and not considered politically correct. A time when the truth is treated with disdain and the people who bring the truth are characterized as haters. I appreciate all the more those who serve the Lord because they have been called to a high calling in this ever-changing society that demands of them to go forth whether it's convenient or not. Always ready and prepared to represent Christ, not only in word, but in attitude and in deed. Because of this high and holy calling, we, the sheep, are called, yea, we are commanded by the scripture to respect those who work hard among us, those who are over us in the Lord, and even those who have to admonish us. We are told to hold them in the highest regard in love because of the work that they do. I know that's not here, but if the truth be told, some of our pastors are working in hostile working environments. Go ahead and tell the truth and shame the devil and stay in church. Yet, even so, they are called, like the scripture says, to do the work of the ministry, even in some dire conditions. Yet and still, they have counted the costs. They have studied to show themselves approved. Workmen that need not be ashamed, but rightly divide the word of truth called to walk out their calling to prepare God's people for the works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up and furnished with every good work. Glory to God, what a mighty calling and what an awesome responsibility our pastors have. Just think, for your benefit, the Lord has sought out one after his own heart and appointed him as your servant leader. According to Hebrews 13, 17, you are exhorted to have confidence in your leader and to submit to his authority because he keeps watch over you as you work out your soul's salvation. Pastors are God's gifts to his people and they are worthy of recognition for their willing and faithful servant. And as a gift, we ought to take care and appreciate them for who they are and for what they do. Well, 1 Thessalonians 5 and 12 says, Brothers and sisters, respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Do this so that the work will be a joy and not a burden not making their jobs harder for them because that would benefit no one. So let me encourage and even challenge you today to ask the Lord to show you ways in which you can minister to and speak life to Pastor Davis because we already know the enemy wants his demise because he is a threat to the kingdom of darkness. So I'll start by personally saying to Pastor Davis, you have been a good friend to me and mine, ministering to, praying for, and even visiting my loved ones on their sick beds. Not because I was one of your parishioners, but because you could not deny your calling. You stand in scriptural authority, teaching the principles of the word and how to live them out. You preach the word of God, and then you firm it up with your teachings. Your life of integrity serves as a model for all to emulate. 
and many have reaped the benefits of your compassion and care. I'm a testament to that truth. So in closing, Paul had to remind some folk that the leaders were called, anointed, and appointed, and well qualified to lead, and that they were to hold the leaders in high esteem, not because of their personalities, not because they did what you wanted them to do, not because you agree with everything they do and everything they say. Paul said, do it just because it's the right thing to do. And that was well said. Pastor Davis, I personally want to thank you for answering the call, even if, even so, even when, and even though. Amen. I believe that I have done what the Lord has called me to do, but before I leave this great cloud of witnesses, I believe there is one other thing that God would have me to do, and that's to give an invitation to anyone who desires to be a part of his family. In the words of a song, let me share with you some gospel truth. God could have chosen to never love again. Fallen man could have gone his way and died in his own sin. But God in his compassion said, I'll pay redemption's price. So he took on the form of man and became the perfect sacrifice. If riches could have paid the debt, then God could have sold all the walls of Jasper and the streets of purest gold. But he knew the cost of one lost soul was more than wealth could buy. And if the debt was ever paid, only love could satisfy. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, should not perish, but they would have everlasting life. Now, in case you thought you didn't measure up or you weren't good enough for this gift, you're in the boat with a whole lot of us. Romans 3.10 says, there is no one righteous, not even one. And Romans 3 and 23 says, because all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But the good news is, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans 10, 13 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So right where you are, I invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Make a decision to trust him today. And as soon as you do that, you are adopted into the family. Amen. If you have made that decision today, welcome to the family of God. Angels are rejoicing over you. So please contact Pastor Davis. He'll be glad to know and will offer you some next steps. So I encourage you to do that. God bless you and thank you in Jesus' name, amen.